Okay, do you know what I found interesting, right? There's a book, there's a very famous book. It's called The Art of War. Yeah, it's written, it's written by someone called Sun Tzu. And it's a, it's a book, if you read it, it's not that long. It's about military warfare. And he's, he's telling, he's giving advice to generals on how to, to act, basically. How to do, do this and don't do that. Basically giving them advice. What I found interesting about this book is that it was actually used, it's used by businessmen and managers and people from different, you know, professions. And I was thinking to myself, what is the link between, you know, the military environment and, for example, business and so on? And the answer is, is that if you can deal with the military environment, then you can use the same exact principles and maxims in business and life and family and the domestic environment and so on and so forth. Now, it's very interesting because Sun Tzu's book is very much celebrated and very much kind of held to high esteem in the academic world. But what we seem to sometimes forget as Muslims is that in the Quran and the Sunnah, there's lots of verses that reference fighting and military campaigns and what to do in, in, in with, with the enemy, what to do with the person you're doing pacts with and so on and so forth. Now, some of that might not be applicable to our everyday lives now. Let's be frank and honest, right? It might not be applicable, but it's the same thing that applies, right? So in the same way as that, a business mind might be looking at to Sun Tzu's book of the art of war so that they can extrapolate those those morals and those lessons and those maxims and principles in order to kind of better their their professional environment and their work so too we should be doing the same thing because there's a high degree of transferability applicability from that environment to this environment now what i want to do is just give you one lesson from Uhud because obviously behind us is Jabal Uhud where the famous battle took place. We talked about on the coach that there were many different battles, 19, that the Prophet Muhammad got involved in himself. This was one of the major ones. And it was a setback for the Muslims. But there's lessons to be taken from it. And I'm just going to choose one thing. And it's about decision making. What I want to say is this. And what I found really interesting, Wallahi, when I was looking into the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad was that when the Prophet Muhammad was making a decision as to where he's going to fight, is he going to fight in the in the medina itself to defend himself and his people from the the onslaught and the aggression or was he going to come out so he done istishara in other words he consulted with his friends some of his friends said no we should fight out and some of his friends said no we should fight in and basically long story short young people who didn't basically fight in Badr and who wanted to really prove themselves said forget about fighting defensively let's go out you know, and meet them here, right? So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he took the advice of the young people and he came here. Okay, he took the advice of the young people and he came here. Then the young people realized that, hold on, maybe the Prophet didn't want to do this and maybe he wanted to take the advice of the other people that were advising him. And he said something which I want to make the, the crux of this whole discussion here. And I want you to remember this. Allah is one of the most powerful statements you will ever hear. Certainly was the case when I first encountered the Prophet Muhammad he said, La yam baghi li nabi. La yam baghi li nabi. Al yalbisa la amatuhu thumma yada'aha hatta yuqatil. He said, it's not permissible for a Prophet to put on his armor. Yes, it's not permissible for a Prophet to put on his armor and go out unless he fights. In other words, I've made my decision. When I've put my armor on, now you can't tell me this or that, nothing will change my opinion. In other words, there is a time for consultation and there is a time for firm decision-making. And people in the Ummah need to realize this. And the Quran says this, and when you are sure and certain, then have tawakkul ala Allah. As the Prophet in another hadith, he says, Aqilha wa tawakkal. Yeah, have put, tie the camel and then have tawakkul. The point being here is this, is that when it comes to decision making, do the following. Number one, don't make a decision alone. There's a whole surah in the Quran called Surah Al-Shura, chapter 42 of the Quran. You know, the Quran says to the Prophet, and he says that in relation to this matter, 
of Ahud. That's the Isbab al Nuzul. That is the Isbab al Nuzul of this particular verse. And if that decision doesn't materially bring out the results that you want, don't blame either the leadership or the followers. Because the, the Quran tells us. It says that it was because of um, mercy of Allah that you were lenient with them. And if you were harsh hearted with them, they would have run away from you. He says three things, three pieces of advice. Number one, be pardoning to them. Forgive them. And consult with them still. Even though they gave you the wrong advice, in a sense, or they gave you advice which might materially mean that there will be a setback in your operations, yet still consult with them to make them feel included into your decision-making process. You see, so this set of advice is a, is a manual on how to make decisions in your life. And although we're not going to be making military decisions, we are going to be making domestic ones, familial ones, business ones, educational ones, academic ones, you know, and with that, we can take that, how to make a successful decision, have specialists.